Reed is going to talk to us about drones and uh, anti-drone uh, countermeasures uh, beyond uh, just simply handing me a drone remote because uh, I got a drone and the only thing I can do apparently is fly the thing into my face. Um, and I've done that a number of times. So let's, speak, let's give David a big round of applause. Good luck. Thank you. Have a good time. Thank you. Thank you. Well, <clears throat> I can say that I'm pretty hydrated. So let's get it started. Well, welcome to my, welcome to my talk. Uh, glad to see you here. Uh, and I'm going to present the project Interceptor. That, uh, well, it's, uh, it's about uh, owning an anti-drone system with nano-drones. Nano so, uh, that's me. Uh, well, I'm David Melendez. Uh, I'm a research and development embedded software engineer in a company in Spain. And, and I'm uh, the creator, the actor of the several robots, and I'm going to explain later. And uh, the author of the book, Hacking con Drones. It's in Spain, in Spanish. And a resident speaker, but not here. <laughs> and a trainiac. Why, why, why am I saying that I'm a trainiac? This is the, this is the uh, Alta Velocidad de Español. It's a pretty cool train, it's fast, and it's cool, and you go fast, but I'm pretty uh, fan of uh, your trains, because they are pretty badass. They stack containers. <laughs> and big fan, big fan of you guys, big fan of you folks, absolutely. So if you, you meet me, uh, later with me, uh, be careful because I, I, maybe I start talking with trains and I can stop. So be careful. So I would like to start with a, with this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're laughing. <laughs> Good job, <laughs> folk. <laughs> I, I, I'm thinking about this guy arriving at home and. Uh, Honey, I'm, <laughs> I'm doing a pretty good job today. <laughs> so that's that's a one point. The second point, previously in DEFCON, uh, well to start uh, with drones in DEFCON. And I think that what is the first uh, drone seen in DEFCON uh, with, with pretty cool stuff. And um, well, with we hacking capabilities, you, you can take the drone along the city, uh, taking a lot of networks, and make some cool stuff, right? And the second one was the, the year ago for the Danger Drone. And uh, it is a pretty cool stuff because uh, we were just uh, uh, 3G and 4G uh, communication and telemetry. So. Uh, that's because uh, several uh, anti-drone systems works indeed with 3G and 4G systems and if you use the same system uh, the anti-drones they can be troll you there's no, no way to jam your drone but uh, only because it's illegal to jam 3G, 4G um, frequencies uh, it has uh, some kind of uh, problems. So I want to explain drones as a threat. Uh, I, I, I like that, that picture because it's, it's, <laughs> it's pretty, um, pretty cool. Well, we, uh, we can start uh, talking about drones as a flying computers. It's like uh, internet things over your head, uh, IoT, it's, we can call EOT as uh, before we return to to assholes <laughs> because uh, there were uh, named quadcopters, okay? They can use custom payloads, sniffers, jammers, network analyzers, 3D mapping cameras, and so on. Some kind of cool stuff you can you can put in your drone. So uh, any kind of thing you you can imagine. You can put it your drone. A drone is a is a vehicle. It's not a weapon. It's not a it's a it's, it's a tool. All right. So we how we can detect uh, drones. 
Well, uh, the first one is okay. I s I'm seeing a drone. Okay, mm, I detected it. So there is a, there are c thermal and standard cameras. Uh, well, nowadays there are uh, a lot of systems that uh, well they are able to detect drones by its shape and with uh, artificial intelligence and so on. And uh, with thermal cameras, with electronics and motor heat detection. Okay, you see four dots on the sky that are, are pretty hot. It's not a pigeon, I think. <coughs> mm, also, other other detection uh, method is a characterization of drone noise. Uh, a pigeon doesn't sound. Okay, we. We got it. Detecting radio frequency and waveform. This is the most important uh, method to detect drones because every every drone has a, a signature of radio communication, and it's pretty easy to detect that this, those drones because, for example, ah okay, and and Wi-Fi with the access point name uh, put here a manufactured drone. It must it must be a drone. Okay. Well, other um, other methods to detect drones. I'm a pretty fan of this. Uh, voluntary measures. Well, if you install in your drone an application that reports to cops that you are flying a drone in a certain area and a, at a certain time, okay, no problem at all. Everything will be all right, right? <laughs> Uh, so, this application gives to cops the ability to take down your, your drone. Imani imagine if you install this application on your car. Okay, everything will be all right. So, perfect plan. So, how about the counter counter measures? Well, we can use several several methods that they are already on the stage. Uh, like sp uh, split the spectrum that um, you can transmit in a, in a very wide uh, area of radio frequency and uh, with the hope that nobody can jump on uh, on all the area frequent hopping you can hop to many channels and use in respective frequencies by the jammer the jammer expect that the drones works in a certain frequencies and robust protocols that we are talking about this. Well, I'm going to explain my first uh, my first round of this stuff. That it is called Atropos. It's a quadcopter that I built like six years ago. You can Google it. It's in Hackaday and so on. And I decided to build uh, with a Wi-Fi router. It's a Wi-Fi router and La Fonera router. And, uh, well, some cool stuff like uh, Wii Remote uh, of Nintendo as a inertial, uh, inertial sensors. So six years ago, there's no Chinese uh, manufacturers that you can buy and they take your sensor to your home. So there, uh, there was uh, easier to take the the sensor uh, from from the Winunchaku, and I decided to to put the sensors uh, to the router directly uh, by attaching the 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 bus to the lights, okay, and uh, control it by by a web server uh, installed on the router. The the program, uh, the stabilization program, is programmed in, uh, in C inside the router, and it has uh, an embedded system. And also uh, has another capability with Bully that is uh, able to to attack other wi Wi-Fi's. So you can see the the La Fonera router and some pretty cool and professional soldering skills, and that's perfect. I'm. So, no, what else? 
uh, I like to see this movie because, uh, well, all the other Star Wars movies make me cry, so I like the, this one, okay? And I like it particularly um, and a scene that we count 30 rebel ships, Lord Vader, but there is a small, they are invading our turbo lasers. That makes, um, that gives me an idea on why not make a small drone, okay, with chopsticks. Okay, because uh, uh, people ask me, why, why are you using chopsticks? <laughs> Uh, do you, don't you have a 3D printer or somewhere? Are you poor or or, or what? Um, well, I, if I print the the drone, no nobody believes me is mine. <laughs> so this is mine. <laughs> um, I'm going to check that. Um, Actually, the drone is draining the, its battery, so maybe I had to to fly before the, the battery drains. <laughs> okay, all right. So the Boring Interceptor is based uh, on low budget. No, seriously, low. <laughs> you take uh, a cheap sensor, a cheap uh, board, and a cheap everything. Minimum size and weight. Harder to detect, okay? And with all the stuff that that, uh, that is on this thing, no? uh, hacking capabilities and resilient control. Well, this is the the drone and the chopsticks. We can see um, uh, a Linux board inside that is indeed uh, a router with an open open WRT line Linux uh, distribution. Uh, inside um, and some cool stuff uh, like reset motors why reset because they are cheap ridiculously cheap okay and small so uh, we have uh, transistors and SDR and a camera so on so you can you can compare with a one euro coin okay and this is the B Core 2. I think this is more, this is the smallest board on the market uh, that is run Linux and we have Wi Fi. And uh, yeah, these are that's the spe specifications. And we have a CP one core of CPU and three serial ports. And the most important thing is. Uh, uh, PWM uh, ports, and there is four. There are four ports of uh, pulse with modulation. Okay, this, uh, those ports are used to control the motors without any other integrated circuit. Just because it has to be small, it has to be cheap, and we have to take advantage on all the all the hardware stuff. Okay, so. We need uh, four uh, PWM signals to control the motors, one for each one, and they are ha uh, hard real-time constraint. Uh, we cannot emulate, and or it's very difficult and uncomfortable to emulate uh, those signals uh, with the quality required to uh, to make the drone works. So. We have four channels available, we, but we only two enable by the manufacturer. We have to enable the, o the other one. But what what happens when the what the the other two? They are the serial debug console. Good job, right? Okay. So we have to disable to disable the the serial port for debugging and enable all the four pins. I went to the forum. Um, the guy that designed the AB core uh, is uh, answering questions, and one guy uh, asked for to enable to the these pins, and the guy answered, "Oh, it's a hard way. Well, you have to download the uh, open the Linux source from Bocor. Second, 
find the DTS, insert, try to understand the pin control, and you have to understand some kind of stuff, and then you uh, uh, make magic. Okay. And you will be a good Linux hacker. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for nothing, <laughs> guy. Uh, so here you you have the all the stuff that you need to to enable and disable all the stuff. You have the UART uh, pins uh, defined. You have a pin max. Okay, this is a maxer. A uh, uh, interconnected uh, inside of the of the of the system on chip. You have to wire. Functions with uh, outputs because uh, chip has more function, more functions than outputs, and you assign a function, a function to an output. So you have to to reassign, disable the the UART, and enable the uh, power with uh, modulations. We have to redefine those pins. We call I call uh, WM pins. We have the first one, the, the zero, the one that they are already defined. But I'm going to define the the uh, other two. That is called UART two PWM. The group is UART, but the function is PWM. Additionally, in the IDC bus, I attach a uh, sensor to to take into account the battery. Okay, we disable UART or we enable the the four channels. Well, this is for only for for your information from the data sheet uh, where, where I found the information to change that. Well, the power stage is a MOSFET. That's me in my work uh, pretending to uh, to know what I'm doing with an oscilloscope, and there is a uh, my my personal version of, of a electronic speed controller. Okay, this is the oscilloscope because uh, with brassed motors we have to deal with a counter electromotive uh, force because. Uh, when the motor is spinning, uh, I have to deal. I have to power it, but the motor acts as also as a generator and puts uh, current in the circuit, a reverse current. Current. So I have to to cancel it with a, a capacitor and a diode and short key diode. This is the P the PD tuning. This is the worst part of build a drone. You have to tune it from zero zero zero. Okay. And um, well, okay. uh, I'm going to explain. The Wi-Fi architecture of this uh, of this drone that is not a Wi-Fi regular drone because uh, it works uh, as a beacon frame-based communication. That's because if you are not authenticated to any network, you cannot be deauthenticated. Okay, uh, nobody come here to add the authentication attack and deauthenticate my drone because it's not authenticated to anything. Uh, we have a joystick. The joystick is not a fancy RC drone remote. That one. And uh, we have a, a pilot side that this is my laptop with an additional Wi Fi adap adapter. So uh, my pro my communication protocol is based on beacons, beacon frames. So in the payload of the, those beacon frames, uh, travel uh, all the data from from my remote, from my joystick, 
and to the pilot, and reverse. If you turn on your laptops or mobiles, you will see two networks, one called interceptor and the other one called um, piloto or pilot. Uh, there are fake networks, okay? One network is uh, generated by my laptop and the other network is generated by the drone. Uh, both sides are designed to listen to each, each other and, um, well, for control and telemetry, as you, as you can see that on, on that slide. Uh, protected with uh, an encryption algorithm because if not, we are not doing nothing. <laughs> so, this is the packet, uh, packet format. And you can see all, all the stuff of uh, encryption uh, algorithm. We have a, an initialization vector, we have a command, a sequence number, and an integrity check. So there is, this is the, uh, this, uh, they travel inside uh, the beacon frame. So, I would like um, we can turn on the drone. I will put uh, on the ground for my safety, not for yours. Maybe I'm going to change the battery later. We got, I have to change the battery. I will try here. I bring down another battery. Well, um, while well, it, it starts again, I'm going to explain uh, you um, a particular um, uh, uh, characteristic of, the, of this protocol, but uh, because um, it allowed me to change uh, the channels of the Wi-Fi, of the both Wi-Fi's, the drone and the pilot, uh, while I'm flying it without, without losing control, uh, that because um, the Wi-Fi adapters uh, they are not perfect. So if you are on channel one, you are listening uh, packets um, from channel two, for example. Uh, this protocol takes advantage of this because if you are, if, if I want to change the channel of the drone to, from channel one to channel five, I tell the drone. Change to channel two, okay? The drone acknowledges that, okay? I'm channel two. Change your your change to channel two. So both pilot and drone are in the channel two. So they are in a loop, changing channels each other until it, uh, they reach all the uh, to the channel five or or the target tunnel that I set. This is the interface. Uh, well, there's uh, some common um, stuff of, the, of this uh, web interface, 
the, inf in the, the interface in is created on the laptop. Uh, the laptop receives the, the VCon frames. The, they they turn into WebSocket packets, and it's uh, they see in the on the on the web page. So I want to show you a video. This is the interface and the drone, and uh, there are the the networks on my house. <coughs> the The drone keeps auditing the the networks, but I I can control the drone while the drone is uh, attacking the networks while with bully. Okay, so there is so many. Uh, networks on on the air, and I am changing the the channel of the drone. Well, you see, they uh, each other are negotiating the the change of the of the channel. You don't see, you can see that here, here channel eight, both, okay, and they change and they change seamlessly. Okay, I don't, I don't lose the the control. That because I don't, I don't want to put an extra adapter, an extra Wi-Fi adapter, on the on the drone. Okay, because it's very expensive. <laughs> uh, it's uh, uh, an extra weight to the to the drone, spe uh, especially. Okay. Are you safe? <laughs> you want to get the hands up? <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's almost okay. okay. So, uh, I'm not a very, a very professional pilot, indeed. But <laughs> well, the other, the other investigation that I'm doing with this is to prove that any. Anybody uh, is able to build a drone with uh, a custom flight controller like mine. This is all all program on C, both uh, the stabilization program uh, inside the inside the V core and the protocol um, of communication. It has a. Um, I'm working right now on a extra fallback communication system based on uh, uh, SDR, okay? Just, just in case, uh, every, uh, just in case, uh, a, a, a drone jammer detect my network, because my network, uh, you can see as a pilot or as an interceptor, but they can change to, to be the same as the as the NRB networks, okay, that is uh, to hide the the presence of the drone. So uh, another protocol 
It's a fallback protocol based on, on, if, on FM that it selects an arbitrary frequency inside that range and uh, start transmitting if the pilot detects that no more telemetry comes from the drone, the, that the link is, is broken. So uh, it, ha it transmits to, with an arbitrary frequency and the, um, the lead motif of this, of this uh, project is that transmitting illegal frequencies are the less problem for bad guys. If, if you are to, to do bad things, the less of your problem is to transmit on FM. Okay. So uh, this is a warning to, to drone manufacturers because uh, I, I still keep uh, sending commands to the drone even without Wi-Fi using a Raspberry Pi radio transmission with a RPTX a project, okay, as a proof of concept. So uh, I'm selecting the, the frequency dynamically, so uh, we, we survey the, the spectrum and I detect the, the peaks and the valleys and then I select the, the best suitable uh, frequency. So, the fallback FM-based uh, communication, we have uh, the joystick. They, they are limited to a four bytes packet, and they are transmitted to a FSK modulation using the mini, the mini, mini modem uh, project. And uh, there are, they turn on into RF format. Okay, uh, they are FM modulated transmission, and they are on air by Raspberry Pi. So an um, SDR dongle on drone captures that frequency and makes the reverse path. Okay, we have uh, an audio capture, and uh, we have to demodu demodulate that uh, packet with uh, the same mini modem, but compiled with uh, for the for the architecture of the drone these uh, MIPS. And we have um, the 4-byte uh, format uh, for flight control, okay? Okay, that was the demo. Uh, you can see the I'm like Porkins. <laughs> okay. I would like to uh, I would like to explain More, we have more time. I would like to explain uh, a little bit more uh, what what method I follow to to pit tuning, because it's the hardest part to to make a drone. Uh, I attach to a to a six a uh, bench, professional grade, uh, with also chopsticks, okay, and other par other home parts on the. <laughs> You can see. So you have to tune the P. That is the propor proportional gain. It's uh, you. You send. Uh, we stay here. If the drone stay, it stays here, and I want to stay straight, the error is zero. It's a, if if it uh, moves, the error changes. So we have to multiply the error by the proportional gain. Okay. We have one force. The second force is the integral uh, uh, term. So I have to take into account how much time is, it, is the drone in an error stage, okay? And the uh, derivative uh, term is it takes into account the speed that I'm reaching the, the desired position, okay? That. Uh, those uh, va values uh, multiply with uh, again. We have a real control of the of the drone. Okay. So. Okay.
This is my pepper. Okay. I would like to see you. So as conclusions, I would like to show you the conclusions. <laughs> okay, we have a ridiculous small size, weight, and cost. This brings to the next point: hardware hacking from scratch. Uh, even uh, you can track if you buy a, a router. Uh, cops can track that you are building a drone for bad or for good, okay? So, uh, we have a side hidden channels communication as a central philosophy, no vendor or 3D, 4D communications. Uh, we keep the cost uh, low because we are using Wi-Fi also, but uh, we have uh, uh, professional capabilities to keep the communication safe, or as the safe as we can. Um, if an expected attack is performed, or, or all the spec or Wi-Fi spectrum is uh, is jammed, uh, we have a, a fallback system to keep the the drone control, and we we have uh, the people can can steal us. Uh, we also have uh, hacking capabilities to uh, hack uh, another Wi-Fi networks, pen testing, and so on, keeping on only one uh, adapter on the drone. Okay, with the same adapter, we have uh, travel uh, throughout all the uh, Wi-Fi channels. So, uh, and a follow control uh, based on uh, SDR protocol. So. I would like to thank you to stay here, and uh, well, if you have any questions, so thank you very much. <laughs>